Well, hello, calculus students and general seekers of truth. Let us um, continue our work here in differential equations by uh, solving the following equation. And just to remind you, to refresh your memory, is that the solution to a differential equation is itself a function. So when we're done with this problem, we're going to have a function. And we might have a, um, a family of functions as well, but at the very minimum, um, either a single function or many functions that follow the same pattern. And so what I've done here is I've started out by just changing y prime into dy dx, right? So this is my original problem that I'm given. I just rewrite y prime as dy dx. And this will allow me to employ um, a very useful technique known as separation of variables. In other words, moving all of the y variables on one side and moving all of the x variables on the other side and then of the equation and then working through it from there. Okay. So I'm going to divide both sides by y and uh, multiply both sides by dx and also divide it by x squared. Okay, so all I'm doing here is employing a, um, some basic algebraic manipulation to the equation. And now that we have dy on one side and dx on the other, we can start by, continue by taking the antiderivative of both sides. Now notice here this three on the right side is a constant, so I can just pull that outside of the integral sign. What I have here on the left, and just to refresh your memory, um, you know, what we really have is, let's see, uh, this is, 1 over y dy. Right? That's what's going on here on the left side of the equation. And this is really equal to the natural log of the absolute value of the variable of y plus a constant. Okay? So that's what I get here on the left side of the equation, the natural log of the absolute value of y plus a constant. And I'm going to temporarily call this c1. Over here, um, we can employ a slightly different method we, by breaking up this fraction. So we have x over x squared plus 1 over x squared. And this becomes much more manageable for us to work with. So on the left here I have 3. And x over x squared is just 1 over x. So let me write some just some general notes here. x over x squared is really just 1 over x. So what I'm really doing here is taking the antiderivative of 1 over x, which is the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then don't forget, 1 over x squared is nothing more than x to the negative second. And when I take the antiderivative of that, um, you know, I get, of course, x to the negative first times negative 1, which I can rewrite as 1 over x plus some other constant. So now um, I can add or come, well, let's see. So what I can do now is distribute the three, uh, excuse me, I think I may have lost uh, suddenly uh, one of my variables when I switched to the other page. Let's me, well, let me correct this real quick before I get too far out of track. So this is minus one over x uh, plus some other constant. Now let's just double check that. Natural log of x minus 1 of x plus some other constant. Okay, so distribute the 3. I get 3 natural log of x minus 3 over x plus, now 3 times a constant is still some sort of constant, so I don't have to worry too much about that. And the left is still the same. So now I'm going to add or subtract c1 from both sides. And it's not a big deal at this point because um, a constant and another constant will give me another, some other constant. So I'm not too concerned about all those details at this point. I'm just going to combine them. I'm just going to call it uh, C. Right. And then now I want to get Y by itself. So I'm going to convert it to exponential form. So that means I'm going to raise everything on the left side here uh, to the using base E. So this whole mass is uh, what I'm raising um, 
to base E. So just make a quick note here that uh, going from log form to exponential form. So this is something that hopefully you have learned in Algebra 2 or in pre-calculus. Okay? And so now I can stop this, uh, stop the work right here, and I can say this, this is my general solution. A general solution. Well, I'm going to keep going just a little bit further because I want to show you uh, a different format that this could be written in. So when I have e raised to that power, understanding how properties of exponents work, this is really e to the 3 nat natural log of s times e to the negative 3 over x times e to the c. And keep in mind now, e to the c, well, e is a constant, raised to the c, that's some other constant. So I can rewrite this as follows. This is c, I'm just going to move that in the front here, 3 natural log of the absolute value of x times e to the negative 3 over x. So I want you to be aware of this just because um, we can... You, if you're taking the AP exam, you will definitely see different versions of this answer. Some people may solve a problem they get to here, and they, they're shocked that, that, that the answer isn't one of the choices, and they think they've done something wrong, when it's really just an issue of simplifying a little bit differently. All right, so that's, uh, that's one possible, that's, uh, you know, this was one possible general solution. This is a different format of the same general solution. Now let us continue and let's discuss the specific solution. All right, now so let's continue with our uh, specific solution. What happens when we give in this condition when y of 1 is equal to 5? So that means if we take our previous equation, I'm going to use this version down here. If I plug in 1 for x, I should get 5 for y. So this tells me that... 5 is equal to some constant multiplied by e to the natural log of 1 times e to the negative 3 over 1. Okay. So just double check here. 3 times the nat oh, there should be a 3 here, times the natural log of 1. Well, it doesn't matter too much because the natural log of 1 is just 0. The, the, again, once, once again, the natural log of 1 is just going to be equal to 0. So this goes away. So I, what I really have here is that 5 is equal to e, c times e to the 0th times e to the negative third. Okay. Well, this is just 1, so we don't have to worry about it. And to get 5 by itself, we can just divide e to the negative third. 5 divided by e to the negative third, that gives us c. Now, 5 over e to the negative third is really 5e to the third, and that will equal c. Okay. So now our general solution will look as follows. Uh, y of x will be equal to c, which is 5e to the third, times e to the 3 natural log of the absolute value of x, times e to the negative 3 over x. And, you know, it's perfectly allowable and possible for us to just to combine all of this together. I just want to show you different forms of this. So 3 plus 3 natural log of x minus 3 over x. Okay, so this is a specific solution to the differential equation. So this is called a specific solution. And the specific solution is when we take the general solution and we apply um, some initial condition to it. So this is the specific uh, solution to our differential equation. So there you have it. Um, hopefully this walks you through step by step and gives you a chance to see how to solve a differential equation from beginning to end, separating variables, taking antiderivatives, applying rules of algebra, and then applying 
um, the, in, the specific initial condition. And now we have this equation and we can you know, continue on and solve for whatever other situations that we may be given. As always, ask for help if you need it. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful